Hey, my name is Mike, and this is Learn Chemistry Now! Now, today we're going to be talking about the International System of Units, or SI units. And SI is French for Système International de Unité, uh, voulez-vous? But we'll just call them SI units. Now, there are seven basic units from which all other units in the metric system are derived, and they are as follows. Mass is weighed in kilograms, length is measured in meters, time is measured in seconds, temperature is measured in kelvins, the amount of a substance is measured in moles, electric current is measured in amperes, and luminous intensity is measured in candelas. Now it's from these seven basic units that all other units in the metric system are derived. For example, volume is simply length cubed, or length times length times length. Speed is length divided by time, or meters per second. So when using the international system, we're often going to have to use prefixes in order to quantify uh, the units that we're measuring. So instead of, for example, having to say, a billion meters, we can just say a gigameter. So in this table I've used grams as the example. So a gigagram, uh, and it's, giga is always abbreviated with a capital G, and a gigagram is going to be 1 times 10 to the 9, or 1 times 1 billion, that's 10 with 9 zeros after it, grams. Uh, similarly, mega is always going to be abbreviated with a capital M, and that's going to mean a million. So a megagram is a million grams. Kilo is always going to be K, and it means a thousand or ten to the three. A kilogram, right? We've, we're all familiar with that. Uh, a kilogram weighs about as much as a cantaloupe. A deci is going to be one tenth of a gram. Centi is going to be one one hundredth of a gram. Milli, one one thousandth of a gram. Now, micro is going to be abbreviated with the Greek letter mu, which almost looks like a backwards u, and that's going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6 grams. Nano is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 9 for nanograms, and uh, when we think of nanotechnology, so this is the scale that they're working at. It's very small. Pico is going to be 10 to the negative 12, and Femto is always going to mean 10 to the negative 15. So we're all familiar with using the American system of measurement, and there's actually only three countries in the world that use this. Uh, that's us, Liberia, and Myanmar. So for some reason, America feels like they have to be stubborn about their system of measurement, but whatever, that's fine. We just have to know how to convert back and forth between the American system and the metric system. So we have to be familiar with certain conversion factors. For example, one inch in the American system is going to equal exactly 2.54 centimeters in the metric system. One mile is going to equal about 1.61 kilometers. A pound is going to equal about 4.53 kilograms. A gallon is going to be 3.79 liters approximately. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the temperature at which water freezes, is going to be equal to 0 degrees Celsius. So let's do a couple practice problems and see what we've learned so far. Okay, so our first problem. Convert 10 centimeters to millimeters. So how many millimeters do 10 centimeters make? So the first thing we have to look at is directly from the table that I showed earlier. And it's that one millimeter is equal to 10 to the negative three meters. So what that means is that 10 to the third millimeters or 1000 millimeters are in one meter. And I did that conversion just by multiplying uh, both sides of this. Uh, I multiplied one and I multiplied 10 to the negative 3 by 10 to the third. So I multiplied both sides by 10 to the third. And so this side I got 10 to the third. And this side, 10 to the negative 3 times 10 to the, to the third 
is just one. So that's how I got that. And I did the same thing with centimeters, and I got 10 to the, uh, the second power centimeters is one meter. So putting that all together, uh, I start with 10 centimeters, and I'm going to multiply it by 10 to the third millimeters divided by 10 to the second centimeters. Why did I do that? Because this whole value right here is equal to 1. And so if I multiply 10 centimeters by 1, I'm not going to change the value, I'm just going to change the units. And so we call this 1 in disguise. Because it doesn't look like 1, but these are the exact same value, and so it's equal to 1. So the centimeters cancel out. Now we just have 10 to the 3 divided by 10 to the 2, and when we're dividing the same base with different exponents, we can simply subtract. So we go 3 minus 2 equals 1. So this whole thing just equals 10 to the 1. And now we have 10 times 10 to the 1, or simply 10, and we get 100. The units we have left are millimeters. So the answer is 100 millimeters. So our second problem is along the same vein as the first one, uh, but it's a little more difficult. Convert 50 kilograms to micrograms. And so I'm going to start the same way as the last one, which is to say that one kilogram is equal to 10 to the third grams. And again, this is from the table uh, that I showed earlier. And so 10 to the negative third kilograms equals one gram. And again, how I got that is I multiplied both sides by 10 to the negative third, 10 to the negative third. So multiply that, this gives us 1, and this just gives us 10 to the third, right? So I'm going to do the same thing with micrograms. And so you see what I'm doing here is I'm relating both of the units that we're working with to grams, and I'm doing that so I can set them equal to each other and use them as a conversion factor. If that doesn't make sense, it probably will in a few seconds here. So uh, one microgram is equal to 10 to the negative six grams, same table. And so 10 to the six micrograms is equal to one gram. So for this one, I just multiplied times 10 to the six, 10 to the six, both sides, that gives us one, and this gives us 10 to the six. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do the problem here. So we take 50 kilograms and multiply it by 10 to the six micrograms over 10 to the negative third kilograms. Now, why did we do that? This is equal to one gram. This 10 to the six micrograms equals one gram. 10 to the third kilograms also equals one gram. So what we're doing here is, again, setting up just a value that's totally equal to one. We call this one in disguise. And we can use it to change the units of a number without changing the value, because you can multiply any number by one and it has the same value. So the kilograms cancel out. Kilogram divided by kilogram is nothing, or one, I guess. and the units we're left with is micrograms. Again, dividing same base uh, exponents, we're gonna subtract. So we're gonna go six minus negative three, or six plus three is nine. So our answer is 50 times 10 to the nine micrograms, or to express that in proper scientific notation, 5.0 times 10 to the 10 micrograms. So I move the decimal place over one and I added another power of 10 to our scientific notation. Problem number three. For this one we're going to be given a value and we'll try to determine what the name of that unit is. So for example, what is 10 to the negative 9 seconds? Well that's going to be a nanosecond and the abbreviation is NS. How about this one? 10 to the negative 6 meters. 
Well, that's going to be a micrometer. And the abbreviation is mu m. Remember, this is the Greek letter mu. We don't use the letter m because it's already being used for millimeters. And last one of these, 10 to the 6 grams. Well, that's going to equal a megagram. And megagram is capital M G. Okay, this will be the final example on this video. And we're going to do some conversions between the American system and the metric system. So let's convert seven inches to centimeters. So what we do is we multiply seven inches by 2.54 centimeters divided by one inch. And as I discussed in the previous examples, this is one in disguise. It's all equal to one because 2.54 centimeters is exactly equal to one inch. So the inches are gonna cancel out. We get 17.78 centimeters, but this is not the right answer because of sig figs. Our starting value only has two sig figs. And so our answer needs to have two sig figs. So our answer is gonna be 18 centimeters with a dot right here. And this just shows that we've measured two digits of the answer. Okay, so this will be our last problem. Convert the following 4.000 gallons to liters. So again, this is converting the American system to metric system. And we'll set it up like this. 4.000 gallons and then multiplied by 3.79 liters divided by one gallon. And we could do this because this whole term here is equal to one. If you have two containers and one has 3.79 liters and the other one has one gallon, they're gonna have the same amount in them, roughly. Now we have to remember that 3.79 is an approximation to three decimal points, but close enough to where for all intents and purposes and for our purposes, it's going to equal one. So that's going to give us 15.16 liters. The gallons cancel out. We're left with liters as our unit. And, but this is not the right answer, again, because of sig figs. Uh, in this case, it's our unit conversion factor, which is our limiting uh, amount of sig figs. Here we only have one, two, three sig figs. And so we can only report our answer to, to three sig figs. So the answer is 15.2 liters. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe. I think the buttons are probably down here somewhere. Thanks a lot. Bye.